Welcome to Campus Conversations, a podcast where every other week we will bring on guests to talk about the University of Nebraska-Lincoln campus or the surrounding community and have conversations about how events or things going on in the city, nation, state, or world may affect our UNL community. I'm Zach Wenling, Assistant News Editor for the Nebraskan, and today I'm joined by Director of New Student Enrollment Jenny Brost and Director of Admissions Abby Freeman to talk about how, during the global health pandemic, students are adjusting to campus life and how NSE events have been updated. Campus Conversations originally began in the spring of 2019, but we are reviving it this summer into the fall semester to involve you, our audience, and you and your community more in each episode. Jenny and Abby, how are you both doing today? Doing great. Thank you for asking. I'm good. Thanks for having us. Of course. Thank you both for joining me today. And I know NSC and admissions, the conversations to switch to a virtual format was not an overnight decision. For both of you, when do these conversations to a virtual format really start happening? Um, I think from an admissions perspective, you know, in March, I think we started to get this hunch that perhaps some of our maybe larger scale events might need to be moved to a virtual space. Uh, and then very quickly after we started that conversation, it became, uh, you won't be in your offices or hosting any of your virtual events or, or your on-campus events or visits at all. So um, while I think in early March we said we need to start talking about these things, I don't think we expected how quickly uh, we would need to turn that around or even you know the workload to create the experience that we wanted to have and do it well um, in the virtual space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, from I think a, a new student enrollment perspective, things happened really quickly in mid-March of having to make a decision on whether or not we were going to have face-to-face -face orientation, uh, which became, it, it became clear pretty quickly that that wasn't going to be the case. So how do we pivot to a virtual format? And that for us was building something from scratch. We didn't have an online orientation. Everything had been face-to-face -face for us. So um, once we figured out that we were going to go virtual, we started almost the next week building online orientation. I know admissions, Abby, works on getting students to campus and getting to think of UNL as really an option for their higher education. How has your department really worked with students to provide them all of these opportunities, even though so many of them haven't been able to be on campus? Yeah, you know, I think it's hard to fully replicate what you can experience on campus, just feeling the energy, seeing your fellow scholars, um, just really picturing that this is your place. So um, I don't think we can ever fully replicate that, but I think we took the approach of what is the content we need to make sure students and families have access to, and let's get that online first. And then once we know that we're getting them the critical information, how do then we start to create experiences that they can start to really connect? And so. Um, you know, we got our daily visits kind of moved online, which was more of an informational session. And then we um, had to host our first ever, actually it was supposed to be on campus, but our first ever virtual admitted student day. And that's where we really got to add in some more flavors of helping them interact more with current students, just get a better feel for the opportunities they'd have as Huskers. Uh, and then we've continued that with some evening sessions that are more topical based for where they might be in their life. So last night they had a session of five current students, many of whom are Jenny's um, orientation leaders, giving them kind of the real deal of what it's like to be at Nebraska and just hearing directly from students and, and taking away some of that staff perspective, but just having time with students on campus. Mm -hmm. And Jenny, for new student enrollment, can you kind of explain to us what it is and its importance? Sure, so new student enrollment is basically the orientation office on campus. So we really um, provide that transition between high school and college. Um, and a lot of that is in our face-to-face -face program is done by um, advising and registration. That's a huge piece of our program. Mm -hmm. um, then meeting their, with their academic advisor and then registering themselves for classes. Um, but it's also about building community. It's really the first time they've interacted um, with current students. In, you know, they do that at a campus visit maybe, but in this way where you know, they are current students as well. That's the day they become a current student. And so what does that mean? How do they build community? Um, how do they find their way at Nebraska? I mean, we spend a lot of time just acclimating them to campus and making sure they feel comfortable uh, coming back in August. So, so shifting that to a virtual format has been interesting for us. Um, and we just started NSC this week. June 1st was our first day. So uh, we're still kind of um, getting our feet wet in that regard. So um, 
you know, when people think of orientation, a lot of times they think of the face-to-face -face component of it. But I think going forward, we have a real opportunity to think of orientation, not just as a face-to-face -face moment, but how do you pair that with an online moment so students can get their content two different ways. And when did planning for NSC start? I know that we had the thinking that we were gonna be on campus for it for the most part, but when did it really start happening? We plan for NSC year round, but I think we, um, our kind of go live date is April 1. That's when students start signing up for NSC and we knew um, moving to this virtual format, we had to push that deadline back a little bit because we needed, we had never, um, done reservations the way we done we did them this year because of uh, the way we were um, going to deliver our program so uh, we made a decision in mid-march uh, that we we're going to go virtual and then april 15th is when we went live with uh, reservations um, and throughout that whole time we were building online orientation knowing that was the route we were going to go yeah and a lot of this has been helping those students transition and really learn about how they can build their community as a future husker what has really been done to help them with that transition and to help them with resources to build that community, even though they are not close to one another, some of them coming from out of state internationally, what has been done to help them build that community? Sure, so after they finish uh, their enrollment with us, we um, give them the link to online orientation. It's in Canvas. Um, and it's an experience they go through. We have four modules on academic success, life as a Husker, paying for college, and then some of their next steps. And one of those next steps is Yellow Dig. Uh, we have many students on campus that might use Yellow Dig in some of their classes. Um, we are using it where each orientation leader has their own group and new students are added to their group every single day. And so they are kind of charged with making community with their different groups. Um, and Yesterday was the first day students were added to their group, so it's been kind of cool um, to see them kind of enter the forums and see the or orientation leaders interact with them. Um, so they have them post videos and introduce themselves. They have kind of like little trivia questions. We have prizes and swag to give away for the, more, the most participations that we have um, within Yellow Dig. So Yellow Dig's been a really nice add-on to our online orientation to promote that community piece. And of course, today is June 3rd, so we're as soon as we post this, it'll be a little later than that. And of course, this is the third day of NSC, as you said. And as we're looking to the fall, both UNL Chancellor Ronnie Green and University of Nebraska President Ted Carter, they've made this commitment to having that in-person component on campus. And so students, they're building that community and they are learning about UNL. How is admissions and NSC looking to build these events and really structure things that as we're leading up into the fall, these students know I'm a UNL Husker, I'm coming to UNL, this is what I'm getting myself into. Abby, do you want to talk from an admissions perspective on some things you, yeah. you're planning? Um, you know, I think from an admissions perspective, you know, we're in the part with our incoming first year scholars who will start in the fall and our transfer and our international students that um, we're here just to help support them, answer their questions, but really make sure they're connecting with Jenny's team. Um, and then we're starting our pivot where we start to work with those juniors in high school, the students who might be coming in spring 2021 or fall 2021, um, because they're now in this mindset of, okay, like it's about to be my senior year, like let me think about this college thing. So um, this summer we won't be having daily visits on campus, so we're still doing remote um, experiences, but we'll be having two virtual events um, one will be in June and one will be in July. So that will kind of be their first taste of what our experiences are like on campus. And then we're really hopeful that um, in August or maybe a little bit later, we can start to have some students in smaller groups on campus. But really for us, I mean, we'll have to keep that virtual community going because we just won't be able to safely replicate the same volume that we would normally be able to do in each fall. Um, so we're really thinking about what worked really well this spring that we can just plan on adding in the fall. And I think we'll see a bit of a blended experience. So working to have on-campus activities when we can and when it's safe, but continuing this virtual space. Because for some students and families, I think this has been really helpful for them to be in the comfort of their own home and learn more about Nebraska. And then when they come, they're even more excited, right, for what they've already learned about. So that's kind of where we are with thinking about what's next, uh, but it's certainly gonna be different than last fall. <laughs> yeah, I know, Jenny, we also have Power Up Weekend was canceled. Um, it'll be, it would have been June 12th to the 14th. That was unfortunately canceled. And of course, 
big red welcome is the six week festivity in August for and September for students. So how has NSE been looking at those events? Yeah, so we've been working a lot on big red welcome events and seeing what we can pull off and maybe what things won't work um, given the current circumstances. So we're still sifting through that. Um, we really feel strongly about having something for students. Um, we want to give them kind of the most normal uh, experience possible. Um, we know we might not be able to do all the things we've done in the past, um, but our core values of making sure they're building community um, and meeting other students is still there. So how can we create that given the circumstances? So, um, you know, we're still waiting to see what the, um, what social distancing and how many people you can have in a group and like how all of that will be in August. And we will adapt to that because there's still some events we'd like to do you know, like our out-of-state student welcome, we still want to have that, our commuter welcome. We'd love to have the street festival. We know it's a huge event, but we're trying to figure out a way to make it safe uh, for not only the students, but the vendors as well. Because um, we know it's a place where students um, oftentimes find their first organization to get involved with. Um, so we know how important that can be to students. So we're exploring all avenues to make sure that we can um, provide as many events as we can and you know we're also trying to take a really keen eye to look at what kind of small group activities we can do um, you know we'd like to offer more class schedule tours and downtown tours and yellow dig meetups so you know whatever yellow dig group you were and you could maybe meet up with your orientation leader um, something that's a little bit smaller that gets them out of the residence halls that gets them out and about and talking to people but doing it in a safe way and some of these first year students who are coming to UNL and they're going to be Huskers, at these orientation events, they would learn about recognized student organizations. They learn about financial aid offices and things like that. Are there some good organizations that you two would recommend or point these first year students to? So that way, the first things they know about are these resources. So that way they can be successful as Huskers. I honestly think online orientation is so comprehensive and they're gonna learn about all of those things in online orientation. And so, um, that is a resource that's going to be live in their canvas that they can access at any time. So if they need to go back and look at things, they certainly can. Um, but, you know, paying for college that, you know, we're really highlighting Husker Hub and all of the things they have to offer. Um, life as a Husker is very much about involvement and all the different pieces that go along with that. So we spent an enormous amount of time on that content, making sure they felt really comfortable with those areas and they knew where to go when they have questions. And so I feel really good about what we put out there for students. Um, it's probably more comprehensive than they would have gotten in a face-to-face -face NSE day because we're just faced with such a compressed day. You know, it's one day, it's a lot of information and, you know, they're really worried about their advising and registration and maybe forget about some of the other things. So online orientation has been a great way for us to post that content and maybe they can digest it a little bit easier. I know Husker Power was a program that was started in the fall of 2019, kind of get these Huskers also acclimated to UNL and everything like that. Can you kind of explain what Husker Power is and if that program is shifting at all in this next year? We're still going to utilize Husker Power this year. It's a framework that students can kind of think about um, how to get involved on campus and how to navigate their first year. Mm -hmm. um, so without, uh, within online orientation, we have the uh, P-O-W-E-R embedded throughout. And so students, if we're talking about engagement, we have the E up there so they know um, that that's what we're talking about. Orientation leaders have testimonials throughout online orientation and they'll have the little icon listed there um, for whatever they're talking about as well. So we are utilizing it in the same way that we would have last year in face-to-face -face orientation, but we just kind of moved it to the virtual platform. Mm -hmm. And then Abby, I know from an admission standpoint, we've had things like the Husker Starter Pack that has started. We've had the Nebraska Promise to offer free tuition to students who are middle income and low income to give them Nebraska residents this chance at a higher education. How has that really impacted admissions and what have you seen through some of these through some of these programs that NU President Carter and Chancellor Green have initiated? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start with the Nebraska Promise. You know, um, I think what a great opportunity to take what was formerly known as College Bound Nebraska and kind of simplify the, the details of it for our students and families so they just more clearly can see this is an accessible place for them and we really care about helping you pursue higher education. Um, so I think that has opened a lot of doors for students. I think after that announcement, you know, our office and Husker Hub got a lot of calls about what does this mean? How do I qualify for it? 
Um, certainly, you know, some interest shortly after with our applications and, you know, something like this doesn't just impact first year students, but it also helps our incoming transfer students and also students who are non-traditional students because this is a unique time in the world where um, depending on what's going on in their life, continuing um, education or going back to school, this might be a really good time and an opportunity. So I'm really thrilled with this and how we can really solidify that commitment to access in this way. Um, the Husker Starter Pack, I think, is another commitment for access, but it's really been also helping transition to what it's like to be a college student by focusing on those incoming uh, first year students at Nebraska. So while there is the affordability component, it's also about helping you orient yourselves with the university, with future classmates, great way to be engaged. I think, I mean, Jenny, you might want to talk about this because there was a lot of thought into even the classes that they were um, off given as an option. Yeah, we were, we were thoughtful on the list of classes to kind of market to students. Um, they were kind of um, some of the classes that freshmen are generally in. Um, high traffic freshman courses and you know we've had a pretty good turnout of incoming students that wanted to take advantage of this opportunity um, and you know some of the classes are full already so we have it's been pretty popular um, and so it's really cool to see students so excited about you know getting a leg up on their start here at UNO. And first year students they can take a list of classes um, they can take any course but there's a recommended list there that they can get a jump start and really that starter pack into their Husker experience for that. And so we are in such a crazy time right now. We're in a global health pandemic. Um, we have those social distancing policies and of course admissions and NSC as we talked about today, they've experienced such dramatic changes and so have many of our Huskers. What would both of you say to those students who are coming in as Huskers, um, thinking about admissions, thinking about NSC going forward? Man, you know, I think um, one of my favorite things about Nebraska is the community. And when I think about the colleagues that I work with regularly on a daily basis, I still see that commitment to community. So while I know that the fall will be different than any other fall that we've had, um, and that might be, might be hard or it might not be what that ideal vision was, it's still gonna be awesome because you are taking an investment in yourself, you're taking this next step. You're gonna be part of a community with people from all over the world. And you have advisors and faculty and staff on this campus who really care. And I know that because of, I mean, I know the hours my staff put in just to make sure students know that this is a place for them. And I see that all across campus. So um, I think the community is strong. Our physical presence might be a bit different, but um, this is really a place of community and we've still got that going no matter what fall ultimately looks or feels like. You know, COVID isn't unique to us. You know, every college and university across the nation is dealing with this. And I think I've been really proud of how we have dealt with it. Um, one of my colleagues at another Big Ten university said, you know, when these students show up, we need to roll out the red carpet and have a lot of fireworks for them because they've been through a lot in these last six months. And I totally agree. Um, I think about that a lot because um, what can we do here to make sure that they have the best experience possible? So that's why when I say things like, can we have the street festival? We're really going to try to have the street festival. Um, I, you know, I don't know if it'll be reality, but we're going to do our best to kind of give them these big rah rah moments um, that they can celebrate um, because they've had a lot taken away with them with their prom and maybe their last sports season and graduation and all these things. So what can we do to make this, you know, really a fun moment for them? to start off their college career. All right, that was all the questions I had, Jenny and Abby. Thank you both for joining me today. It was a wonderful conversation with both of you. Is there anything either of you would like to say while I still have you? I just wanna say thanks for having us. Um, another reason why Nebraska is great. This was so much fun. So um, I look forward to future um, DN podcasts and seeing our new students join the team, so. Of course. First time on a podcast, so this was <laughs> But this was fun. I, if I had to do it for my first time, I'm glad it was with the DN. Well, thank you guys so much. And to all of you tuning in, if you have any ideas for what guests or topics you would like to see on this podcast, be sure to stay up to date with our social media platform. But also feel free to comment below on this video or contact, uh, contact us directly at news at dailynebraskan.com. And until next time, thank you all for listening and be sure to join us for the next Campus Conversations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Zach.